Hello students, how are you all? Today, I will be explaining the revision of your CA final FR new course. I hope you all are ready. Let's begin. Okay students, pay attention. I hope you all can see the screen. I have written in AS40 investment property on the screen. These are the same notes that I had told you to write down in your notebook. These are the same notes that I told you during the recording of the new course. Don't think that I will discuss and teach you everything from beginning. I want to tell you that I am here only for revision. I taught you around 9 to 10 lectures in the end as 40 and I will try to summarize it in an hour and a half. I hope you are getting my point. I will just revise all the concepts. Don't expect that I will explain to you. You have to see the classes for studying. Students, I taught you with patience. I teach very slowly and I am known for teaching patiently. I will tell you everything in revision but I want to give a disclaimer. All of you know that I speak slow. Because of speaking slowly, class duration increases. So when students watch my videos, they have to watch it with speed of 1.5x. I know that my videos are watched at 1.5x. Moreover, if speed will be slow in the revision video, then you can watch my video in your comfortable speed. Because if I speak fast, you can't make me slow, but if I speak slow, you can make me fast, right? I have to teach weak student as well as brilliant student together. I am not here to teach only same type of students. Therefore, a good student can manage, but an average student needs me and I am working for them. So you can control the speed of the videos. I am going to explain in AS40 investment property. This is our part number one. Part number one means lecture number one from where I started it. And students, the first thing I taught you was concept number one, meaning of IP. What is an investment property? In investment property, I told you that it can be land, a building, it can also be both. So, in that case, we will use the word land and building. It can only be land, it can only be building or it can be both. But there should be an objective of rental income. I hope you are getting the point. While here, long term capital appreciation. Let's say that you bought a property in a residential area. You also bought a property in commercial area and you bought one in industrial area, right? And you let it out, you gave it on rent and from there the rent started coming. The property that gives you rental income, we will classify it in India as 40. Now you purchase 10 acres of land on highway, you know that a new road will be constructed. Then a national highway contract is passed and you purchased land near it. When its rate will increase, then you will sell it. You bought it for appreciation. But your appreciation should be long term. Because the growth in real estate sector is not fast enough. Property prices rise because of inflation. So, the prices increase on long term basis. It's not like stock market. You can't buy or sell shares here and get instant profit. Real estate moves at its own speed. And we only check for appreciation on long term basis. I have explained this before. Investment property will either provides rental income or long term appreciation. Location of your property does not matter whether it's commercial, industrial or residential. Now from here confusion started. So I did an out of scope comparison for you. I told you out of scope. The out of scope says that land and building. We have such cases. It will be land and building but some other end AS will work here while end AS 40 will not work because objective has changed. Next I will start with an example. If you have land and building and you are using it for your business in normal course of business. We will apply in AS 16 on it and we will classify it with PPE. If you want to earn rental income or appreciation then your investment is property, okay? If you use it in business, then it's PPE and I told you that if we take an example of DLF, what is it? 
DLF is a real estate company. And what does a real estate company do? It develop projects and sell those projects. They construct group housing. They also build shopping malls and then sell them. If you are holding any land or building property for sale, hold for sale in which in normal course of business you do the work on that you are a real estate company you will put in as2 on it and it will become your inventory therefore land and building will be used in business you have 16 on them you are keeping it for sale and you are working on it then inventory and as2 will be applied on it i also gave a small exception below it if dlf built a shopping mall but not for selling purpose it was built to rent out. For example, DLF Emporio in Vasant Kunj has not sold any shops. They leased them out to Gucci, Versace, Prada. DLF is earning from them. Now DLF classified it in 40 because rental income is coming from them. Hence the ones kept for sale are inventory while others kept for rent are 40. We will have to figure out the intentions. I told you this earlier students. Then I told you that if any land is being used for agriculture, then we had apply in AS42 for it. Right students? Although it's land and building, but if intentions and use change, then in AS is changed. Next I told you that if any land used for mineral resources, used for extraction of mineral resources like mineral oils, mineral ores, natural gases. If a land is used for extraction then 106 will be applied. I told when intentions changed, India's changes. I had mentioned in fifth point if there is any contractor. What is job of contractor? To develop project. Construction will be WIP. We will apply in AS 115 on the construction in progress. Next, if you have any land and a building with you, but it's a non-current asset held for sale, then it will be 105. I hope you are understanding this, that's land and building. How many days will be applied? I had told you earlier that if you have both land and building and you want to make a short term appreciation from it, then what? I am referring to short term appreciation and not long term. You bought a land, sold it before registry, you made profit or maybe loss. You have short term and AS2 will be applied as you have worked on it and that's why we will refer to it. In term appreciation investor is involved. That's why we use in AS40 investment property. World runs on investment purpose. And I have explained seven points. Land and building. I checked 7 uses and gave you the references of 7 and AS. The 8th one is in AS40. Therefore, I explained entire system in one lecture. Let me check it. Firstly, I told you this in class. Investment property has two main perks. Earning rental income and the other is appreciation. Right? Your property can be anywhere. The property can be residential, commercial, industrial. Then, out of scope. Different and AS are applied on land and building as per its intention. For example, if you use any building as part of your normal course of business, then write in AS 16. We will classify this as property, plant and equipment. Another name for it is owner occupied property. PPE is called owner occupied property. It means owner has occupied it himself. For in DS2, I give you an example of DLF. Okay. One exception was written that if property is developed by real estate company and it needs to let out, then use in AS40. Check more the seven examples I told you. In agriculture, we will use in AS41. While in extraction of oil, 106 is used. If non-current asset is held for sale, 105 is used. In short term, then in AS2 will be applied. In construction WIP, in AS115 will be there. The entire lecture was just about in AS40 and its coverage. I hope you are getting this. 
Lecture also included other topic that shows how land and building covers other end AS. While the topic end AS has not even begun, then came second lecture, part two, lecture number two. We started a little detailed discussion from here. If you remember, I had explained relationship between int AS 40 and 116. What is in 40? Investment property while what is in 116? Lease. I explained you that investment properties are either for rental income or for appreciation. When I use the word rental, in AS 116 will be there. Why? Because all the lease rentals are dealt on the basis of 116. Therefore, in days 40 and in days 116 are related to each other, right? If you want rental income, read in AS 116. So, when I connect 116, 40 and 116 together, everyone knows two types of lease, right students? Hence, either it will be operating lease or will be finance lease. Next students, there are two parties in operating lease, lesser and lessee. And two parties are also in this lesser and lessee, clear? You should be clear about entire status, what to write on whose books. So, I started explaining the operating lease to you. I have two parts of the operating lease. One is lesser and other is lessee. Right students? Do you know operating lease? Furthermore, in an operating lease, the lesser never de-recognizes the asset. I hope this is clear to all. This operating lease is a genuine lease and a short term lease. While the lesser never de-recognizes its property, it keeps ownership on property. Okay. Whereas other has been given on rent, he will pay the rent and we will take rent. But we won't de-recognize the property from our books. When the property of lesser is in lesser books, under the operating lease then, we will have this in days 40 here. And when the property is with the lesser, then the lesser will apply in AS40. I told you that there will be in AS40 on the asset. While the rentals, the accounting of rentals will be done in 116. And 116 says that all the rentals in operating lease should be recorded on SLM basis. There is no systematic allocation. Check the lease revision. Who will put 40 on the property? The lesser. The rent accounting will run at 116. Now see Lessie here. We asked Lessie if they had recognized the investment property in books. They said that they don't recognize it in short term lists. There is no property on short term lists. When there is no property at all, there is no question of any application. And the rental they will pay will be according to 116 and will add it in SLM or systematic allocation premium. In operating lease, I explained code to you. In accounting for rentals, whether in books of lesser or lessee, will be as per 116. Moreover, for property, 40 in lesser books, while there is no application in lessee books. This was operating lease then, there was finance lease. In finance lease, there are again two parties, lesser and the other is lessee. I asked the lesser, what did you do with invested property? It was financed on lease. Hence, financing on lease leads to de-recognition. I hope you all are aware that what entry is passed by the lecture in their books for finance lists. This will pass the entry receivable debit to IP. In a way, this shows sale of an asset. The entry that will be passed here will be IP account debit to lease liability. Okay. In finance lease, lesser is considered assumed seller and lessee is considered the assumed buyer. I hope you all remember this. Lesser D recognizes the asset while Lessie recognizes the asset and you can also debit the ROU in its place. Clear? Right of use debit, ROU debit to lease liability. So the asset under finance lease, it goes from Lesser's books to Lessie books. We asked Lesser, where is the asset? Lesser said it went to Lessie and Lesser did the finance lease. There is no application as it doesn't have any asset. The asset itself got recognized. Next, application for 40 can't be done in Lesser's books. It doesn't have property. I asked about rental. He will do accounting for rental based on 116. He doesn't have property. I said it's okay. Then I came here. 
I said, what about property? He recognized it. Then I said, what about this property? I asked, how will you use it? He said, we'll use in business. I have taken it on finance lease. I will build factory in it. Then PPE will be 16. We will do accounting, measurement and end AS 16 like PPE. I asked him what he would do with this property. He said he would sublease it, right? If it's used in business, we will write end AS 16 in lessee's books, right? If he sublease it, then there will be two ways. One is operating, other is finance. If it is operating, then they will remain owners. Then it will be 40 because he rented it. If again he subleased on a finance lease, then the third party will become the owner. Clear? If books have no application, we ask third party, what will you do with asset? The whole procedure was explained to you. So, the correct way will be rental accounting, whether operating or finance, even if it's lesser or lessy books, use 116 according to the account. But in accounting of investment property, in the case of operating lease, it will be written in books of lessee. In finance lease, we'll ask lessee and according to its use, we will apply in the AS. If it's used in business, it will be 16. Sublease is operating lease and if owner gets rent, use in AS 40. If he again give finance lease to third party, company will lose control of everything. How they will use the assets? I told you everything about in AS 40 and 116 in relation to each other and I taught you this in one entire lecture, right? I taught you with conviction. See this. Now operating lease or finance lease, there are two cases. I explained you operating lease and I made a flow chart in this. Look at this. We made a flow chart. Next students, we have a lesser who is an owner and let's say who is tenant and this will be 40. He will charge 40 and will do the rental accounting at 116. In his books, there is no asset with operating lease, short term lease, so we put across. There is no application in his books, but for rental accounting, he will add in AS 116. No accounting for IP because Lessie does not have IP in books. I hope you are getting this. Moreover, in short term or operating lease, this doesn't have anything. How can it add 40? Then I explained case 2 finance lease to you. I made a flowchart in this. Look at this. If we are in the book of lesser. Now look here students, lesser will be recognized the IP due to which the property will not exist in book. Therefore, there won't be any application. But when we ask lessee, he says that he will recognize in finance lease. If he uses it in business, then write 16. If he subleases operating lease, he will remain the owner. We will not de recognize and will add 40. Then ask someone else what will he do? This flowchart will keep moving ahead. While for rental 116 will be applied, and I have told you this before. I explained you meaning of investment property, then told you different in AS in land and building. I told you where is land and building covered and its relation with 116. 40 will be applied on property. How to choose books of lesser lessee, but you keep doing the rental accounting for 116. Now let's move forward. In various issues, I had discussed many other things. First point was that if investment property is given to employees, then understood. The name of the company is X Limited. It has a property and it gave that property to its employees on rent. So if you give your property to your employees, then it's not considered rental. I hope you get my point. This will not come under in AS 40. It will be owner occupied property and use in AS 16. But a question must have come in your mind that if we take rent from the employees, then what will happen? So. I told you to write this in notebook that if your employees gives you full rent or they give discounted rent or don't give you rent, it has nothing to do with the amount of rent because Indes won't accept that your employee will pay full rent. There is no point in explaining. It says that since it's for employee, this will come under business. We will consider this as owner occupied. This has nothing to do with 40. 
even if employee is not paying rent no use of rent if it's employee then it's owner occupied look here this property such property will be considered as owner occupied and we will add 16 on it then if you remember i told you that it does not matter whether entity is charging full rent concessional rent or no rent okay i had discussed first case with you second case within various issues this was land acquired with undetermined use right students now say if any entity purchases land somewhere that entity bought 10 acre land kept it after buying then auditor came to audit the auditor asked about the land owner said land was cheap so he bought it he does not say whether any factory will be built on it or it's for business or warehouse purpose he is not telling he says we'll see it later hence ind as 40 says if you buy any land for an undetermined purpose we will assume that appreciation will come here you have done investment we will apply ind as 40 here therefore if you purchase land with no purpose we will assume it's an investment property then a student asked me that what if a building is also purchased along with the land but the specific use of building is unknown then this means a building is purchased with undetermined use i told you that under end as 40 only land is discussed there is no information of building we cannot use 40 on it if you buy a building with undetermined use then we cannot use 60 and 40 in it i hope you get it i have already told you the whole thing right it will be considered that it is held for long term appreciation then we add 40 on it then write a note there is no explanation in end as 40 there is no explanation on acquisition of the building with undetermined use there is no explanation for building it means building with undetermined use will not be covered under 40 we can consider application 16 16 is added on such building if we give to employee 16 will be applied for undetermined use we will add 40 but if it's for building use then it will be 16 so you should know which in the as is used on property and how application is done we discussed this before i told you see point for mixed property what is this this is third lecture two lectures are over no practical questions were asked we are only discussing theory and no student will deny this because now mcq are here for 30 marks and you don't even know how mcq questions will be made and from which part those kids you know 180 to 200 hours short crash and booster courses i don't even know what other courses are there but they all fail because of 30 mcqs now you will have to study entire syllabus in detail so just use shortcuts and you will know it in exam there will be 30 questions you can attempt 10 to 12 by shortcuts if you will go having studied in detail retaining it then you can easily cover 90 to 95 percent either lose marks in mcqs or get full marks it's in your hands you will get to solve mcqs only after detailed study mixed property it's our third case look what did i teach here suppose there's building there are four floors in building one two three four these two floors on the top we rented that out and these two floors in bottom are being used for business there is one building used in two ways half is rented out and other half is used for business this is called mixed property so here india s40 is very clear india s40 says that if it's a mixed property case first you need to check if your property is separable or inseparable separable means the one you have given on rent can we sell this separately if i want to sell this can its registry done separately this one that i am using for business if i want to sell it or give it on finance lease will the registration be different so if your portion is separable you can sell it if you want and if you want to give it on a finance lease you can do that too it means that it is great if you can split it off and if it's a separable case then put 40 on this and 66 on this 
divide this property into two parts. You know this is separable because you can sell this. So if registry of top two and bottom two floors can be done separately, you can sell it if you want. It's separable case. So just show rental portion as an investment property and show other portion in 16. If this is the case of inseparable, how will case of inseparable be made? If building has no floors, just one single floor. When I have a single floor, I gave 50% of it on rent and I am using the other 50% myself. I asked property dealer whether we can divide it in half and make two sections out of it. Will we get stamp duty? Is its registration possible? They say no sir, in Delhi if you want to sell, you will have to sell the entire floor. You cannot partition it. A registry should have at least one floor. So now you know that they can't be separated. It's inseparable case. What did I teach you in inseparable? In inseparable, I taught you that first check. What's being used in business? Is this significant use or insignificant use? Do you understand what I am saying? If it's inseparable property, then in that case, you don't have to see how much portion has been given for rental. You need to see how much portion is being used in business. If it's using significant portion, then apply 16. And if your business is using insignificant portion, then put 40. In business, you have to check whether significant or insignificant is used. If it's a separable case, then separate it. If it's an inseparable case, check how much is being used in business. I had told you that no rules for significant or insignificant are mentioned anywhere. I had told you 20% after referring some commentary. 20% or more is called significant. So if your business uses 20% or more, then single end AS16 will be applied to entire property. And if 20% or less of your property is being used in business, then it is insignificant. Put 40% on the whole property, 2 end AS won't work, 1 end AS will. Two different end AS are applied in separable. And 1 end AS for inseparable according to significant and insignificant as I had mentioned. This was mixed property case. Look at this. The first case is that if your mixed property is of separable nature, what does separable mean? If you can sell any portion of it or give it on finance lease as it is similar to selling. So what will you do in case of separable? I showed a flowchart, put 16 on the portion for business and put 40 on the portion for rent out. This is the case of separable. So, but there was another case of inseparable. Uh, here, if this is inseparable, you can neither sell one portion nor you can give its finance on lease. So it will become inseparable. Then what do you have to do? Then what will you do? If significant portion is used in business, if it is significant in business, put 16 as a whole. Only one in AS and if insignificant is used in business, then we will apply 40. We don't have to focus on rented part, but on business part. You have to apply significant insignificant on business. Significant means 20% or more. Insignificant means less than 20%. After that, we will choose our end AS. This entire thing was taught in class. Better check your notes. As plain as the nose on your face. I have given notes for everything. Various issues are going on right now. You will give property to your employees to live in. Apply 16 to it as it is unoccupied. If you have bought a land and it has no specific use, apply 40. If you have bought a building with no specific use, then apply 16. If it's a mixed property, then inseparable and AS will be applied individually. And in inseparable, we will see the use of significant and insignificant in business. See, question 1, 2, 3 have been discussed in class. Concept, questions, concept, questions, concept. I haven't just taught theory, we have also done questions. So the fourth case was of ancillary services. What was the meaning of ancillary services? Let's say A Limited has leased out one of their properties. There is a company A Limited which has leased out a property to its tenant and provided maintenance service that they will fund the maintenance of the property. He was given a security guard. 
that will also give you security providing security and maintenance are ancillary services so the ind as 40 clearly states that if an owner or a lesser gives any ancillary services to their tenants so then there won't be there won't be any effect on ind as 40 ind as will be applied as per your wish your ancillary services have no impact on neither your lease classification nor your end AS classification, whether you give maintenance or security. So don't get confused about paying security as well as maintenance. It doesn't matter. These expenses are added in P&L. Do the classification of property the way you were taught. But there was one exception regarding hotel. That if you have a hotel with 300 rooms built in it, people come, stay for 3-4 days and leave. They eat, use the swimming pool, use the gym, relax themselves and then leave. Then again new guests come to stay. So hotel is a business and rooms that are made in hotel. They don't come in 40. A hotel is a business. So always classify hotels in 16 PP. We didn't even talk about it. So don't bring hotel into IP. Tell me when you book a room at a hotel, do you have to sign a lease agreement? When you go to hotel for 4 or 5 days, do you create lease agreement first? No, you just have to pay the money and fill a form with your details in it. That's it, no lease agreement or stamp paper needs to be signed ever. So hotel is a business, put it in PPE, I have explained everything. Look what I asked you to write. If ancillary services are provided to the tenant by the owner of the building, that is the security guards and the maintenance. It won't have any impact on classification of IP, no difference. But the hotel which, I mean your hotel provides all the services to its guests, but the hotel's job is just business, isn't it? Hotel is considered as business, that's why you have to invest 16 on it. Case of total is different. This is all explained to you. So, lecture number 4 is here. I have revised 3 classes for you. And this is your lecture number 4. And in lecture number 4, I had discussed with you the concept of consolidated financial statements. Concept of holding subsidiary. What did we study here? CFS, holding or subsidiary. It's possible that the holding company has leased out an investment property to one of its subsidiaries. If holding and subsidiary are separate and both are creating their own SFS, one is lesser and the other is lessee. So, proceed further on the basis of relationship of 116 as discussed earlier. But the problem is that when you do H plus S and you will form group statements, then they both will get combined. When both of them get together, their mutual leased agreement will get cancelled because intergroup transaction gets eliminated. The property that holding company had given to subsidiary, you will get that back when you will do H plus S. I gave a property to someone, it's my subsidiary. I am making a CFS so it got added to it. When we did H plus S, then I get all my things back. We will combine both of their balance sheets. You should know elimination of intergroup transactions. I have given you two cases. First case, the holding company leased an investment property to its subsidiary. Now we are making H plus S. I asked subsidiary, where was the property that I had given? Subsidiary said that he was using it for business. The property that was let out is still within the group. When I did H plus S, the property is with him and he is using it. Holding company is using property that they gave to the subsidiary in their business. When I do H plus S, create single entity, my property has been returned, meaning it's being used within the group. It's being used within the group, so what are you doing individually? Leave it, we will use 16 in CFS. Because within CFS, his business is my business. So if my property is being used for business, then 40 won't be applied to it, 16 will. Second case where holding company leased property to subsidiary. I asked the subsidiary about the property. 
he said he had sublet the property on an operating lease and i'm just collecting rent i asked which lease he said operating lease which was okay this means h plus is equals to cfs we got our property back but it's not being used in business we had put it on operating lease and as we know we don't de recognize properties we remain its owner so i will apply 40 here third case the holding company leased an investment property to a subsidiary we asked the subsidiary what they did with the property they said they finance leased it to a third party property went from holding company to subsidiary and from there to third party now when you do h plus s and make cfs there should be no application neither 16 nor 40 because in the finance lease now that the subsidiary has become lessee it had to be de recognized third party will recognize it but there won't be any impact on group so if the lease and the property are within the group and they are being used then apply 16 lease along with property are within the group and we have given it to third party on operating lease apply 40 the lease is within the group but you gave finance to a third party and so they left the group now no one will count the interest i explained the whole system to you in detail with explanation look here i have explained you this whole process i showed you a flow chart if uh, the lease is within the group the holding has let out the subsidiary investment property is also used within the group within our group itself so we will apply 16 if the lease is within the group but we have let out the ip to a third party then we will first ask which lease it is if it is an operating lease then it is a simple lease for renting then we will apply 40 but if it's finance lease then third party will become owner so then nothing will be on group neither 16 nor 40 ask third party what they will do if and as is applied he left the group we will see ultimate use of it and what's happening this concept was explained to you it was not just a story i did question number 16 on this and got notes written on it then i dictated notes of 17 about what will happen in hfs and cfs everything is explained to you in detail then we had come in next concept this was the initial recognition of investment property what are four concepts you've learned before this the first concept is the meaning of ip second concept is out of scope third concept is the relation of 40 with 116 fourth concept you learned is various issues what will happen if given to employees what to do when undetermined is used when there will be mixed properties when ancillary services will be there if cfs is created in various issues i told you five things i have reached concept number 5 initial recognition and in simple language the initial recognition is called purchasing an investment property to pass first entry buying an investment property and then noting it down so i had told you that there are five ways if you want to acquire any investment property when you buy a property for the very first time then it is called acquisition of property initial recognition to pass the entry for the first time i had told you five ways to do it there are five ways to purchase property practical questions can come in five ways first you can purchase in cash suppose you purchased ready made property from someone second you can do self construction you can build it yourself according to your taste like you want to make third deferred credit you bought a property but will pay in the future fourth exchange you bought a property but you paid for it with another asset okay it was an exchange of assets just like when we give old car for new car exchange of assets similarly you paid something else for property you did not pay in full fledged cash one asset was exchanged for another asset and the fifth way is that you take it on finance lease If you bring it on finance lease you can still recognize it lesser will de recognize it while lessee will recognize it 
so these four ways these are of the actual owners you will actually become the owner of this and this finance lease is an assumed ownership you don't become owner here it's assumed that you are you can buy property in five ways and i had explained each of these five ways in detail for example first is cash when you will buy any property in cash so first you will have to give purchase price the property owner will ask you for money then you have to register that property so you will have to pay for stamp duty and stamp paper the dealer who will get you the deal will charge brokerage is there any expense that you think is related to the purchase of the property stamp duty brokerage are clear cut expenses there is no such expense related to the acquisition of property that you can capitalize on its cost if any expense is directly related to acquisition of an asset can be capitalized to cost of the asset this is already taught to you we will put in one entry investment property account debit to bank but i had mentioned some exceptions to you i will tell you about some items which never becomes a part of a cost of an investment property never you can't even take it to cost first the advertisement dlf has built a luxury shopping mall and has started advertising it saying that they have built this shopping complex and if anyone needs property for rent they can contact them you must have seen ads like the omax mall built in chandni chowk they have delhi ads saying that they are opening jewelry showrooms on first floor if you are looking for a place to rent contact us we get such advertisements daily saying that they are giving second floor to clothing showrooms and designers so the advertisements to let out properties suppose you have bought a property and you want to let your property out on rent so you are advertising about it that the property is available for rent so this ad will go to p and l it has nothing to do with acquisition the second inauguration inauguration and inauguration means ceremony a new shopping complex is built and they advertised about it in newspaper announcing its inauguration asking people to come visit the property and rent it out if you like it ceremony expenses ceremony expenses these are also a kind of marketing cost p and l it has nothing to do with acquisition then i had told you day to day day to day expense you purchased a property and you got that property repaired and you even got it whitewashed okay and you repaired its bathroom so the maintenance will have to be done right it's called day to day servicing you will have to maintain the property with day to day servicing so it will go in p and l electricity bill water bill etc are all day to day expenses these are not all capitalized all of these are part of p and l and fourth one if you have purchased any property and there is no tax or duty on these and those taxes and duties will be refunded to you they are refundable in nature so the refundable duty refundable tax never becomes part of the cost refundable taxes if you have paid some duty but you'll get it back then that is not part of your cost i told you about these four things but i gave you an exception for this daily day to day expense that if you buy any property the property's condition is very bad you will need to do some capital expenditure you will have to change all the flooring and the interior as well if you acquire property and there is capital expenditure that you need to do you can add it to cost but the day to day servicing goes to pnl this whole thing was explained to you look i will show you this is our initial recognition this is actual owner this is assumed owner you were given four cases on this cash self construction deferred credit exchange and this is a finance lease so first i started with the cash for this i had created a statement look the purchase price is there along with stamp duty brokerage 
any such expense which is related to acquisition will be included in cost and I had told you which costs to exclude. What's not included in cost? Look what was taught to you. There will be no marketing or promotional expenses. Any ceremonies that you do for fame will be P&L. It will become a topic of discussion. There's an operating expenses for day to day. Everything goes to P&L. But there was an exception. If any capital expenditure is incurred on renovation of investment property, you renovated the walls, flooring and even ceiling, you can easily capitalize that. Because it's not routine service. Also, if any tax and duty are of refundable nature, it is not included in cost. I have only told you one method of acquisition, the cash one. I have told you all its points. Then I solved questions in class along with question 15. We did some entries. Then two questions are given for homework 9 and 22. First four videos are over. Now this is our fifth video. So let's see investment property. This is lecture number 5. Now what was taught in this? So we started the initial recognition. We saw there are five methods to purchase. We completed cash. Second was self-construction. If you, for example, construct any property yourself, then in that case, what you will need to do, you'll need to buy land first. We'll have to pay for it. So acquisition of land. For building a structure on top of it, you will have to be a development expense. You bought the land first. After that, there is stamp paper duty. Giving brokerage to the broker, this was the land's cost. Now, to build structure, development expenses will occur. Material, labor, overhead, keep track of everything. Note the cost of construction. This is self-construction. Now, keep two things in mind. First, abnormal loss. When you build it yourself, there is always theft on the site. Misuse is there. Abnormal loss will go to PNL. It won't come under cost. Secondly, doing self-construction consumes a lot of time. And during that time, you might have borrowed money from the market. And you have to pay the interest. So, and AS23 gives you permission to capitalize that interest. In case of self-construction, the interest after succession. Like the day your property is ready, interest after that goes in PNL. So, keep two things in mind. First in India is 23 interest capitalization is allowed in self-construction. Acquisition is not time consuming as interest is not capitalized in it. But self-construction takes substantial time. Qualifying assets definition is complete, interest is capitalized. So normal loss goes in P&L but interest can be capitalized. Now look here. For self-construction you'll first purchase the land, pay stamp paper, brokerage and development expenses material wages overhead everything will come here now remember two things first abnormal wastage it will go into pnl we can't capitalize it in pnl second interest in as23 allows to capitalize in qualifying asset i told you this rest we will see this in 23 in detail so cash purchase is fine and self-construction is also fine. Only two, three things you have to remember. Now we have arrived at third case. The third case is of deferred credit. And this deferred credit I had explained. When in the AS16 of PP came, even there purchase was in deferred credit and I said rule of 40 will be imposed. Then in intangible I said the 40s rule will apply and it was used in every India S. So I invested time only once. You bought an investment property. But the payment of it, you deferred that payment. You said I will give 10 lakhs after one year, another 10 lakhs after two years. You will do payment in future. So in the deferred credit case, time value of money is involved. So what you need to do is, you need to find out the present value of cash outflows. So after one year, two year, three year, whatever future payments you have to make, calculate all of their present value. So when you'll calculate their present value, the interest will be removed and that present value will be your cost. When you'll discount the payment at market rate, 
then obviously present value will be less. So we will consider that as cost of asset. Raised all is interest, it goes to PNL. It won't come under cost. And I also made you pass the entries. First entry is IP account debit to creditors. PV of outflows. PV of outflows. Then let's pass second entry. Interest account debit to creditors. Before making the first payment, make the interest due. If it's half yearly, then interest for six months. If it's yearly, then keep the interest due for one year. Now we'll pass next entry. Creditors account debit to bank. Put payments entry. And PNL account debit to interest. Then we will make the next interest due and make payment. Its interest will go into PNL. But remember one thing: this IP, this interest is not the part of its cost. If you delay any payment, then that delayed payment will include interest based on the time value of money. Removing that interest will give you cost. And this I've explained to you in detail. Look. Now to calculate the cost of IP, calculate the present value of all cash outflows. We even saw a very good example for this. Wait, let me show. Okay, look, this is our example. Payment to make after one year is ten lakhs. The payment to make after two years is ten lakhs, and market rate is ten percent. Now do the entry. First, calculate the present value of this. Then the present value of this, and this is the cost. Here we got PV, and you made its entry here. Now ten percent interest calculated on it is one seventy three five hundred for one year. That is your yearly payment. Let's check next entry. Next entry will be interest account debit to creditors. On balance, we charge ten percent. Interest was made due. Interest to creditors. Then made payment to creditors of ten lakhs. PNL to interest. Then next year's interest due. For this, let's check creditor account. Here's the creditor account. First entry, interest was made due, payment made, then balance came. On balance, next year's interest was calculated and payment was made. All this has been taught to you. Buying in cash means there will be no interest, and self construction means no interest. But if you do it on deferred credit, then interest will come. So all the cash outflows present value is the cost. Rest of the interest will go into PNL. Remember this. After that, our fourth method of purchase was exchange. All these questions have been taught to you with their accounts created. Then comes fourth case, the exchange of assets. Exchange of assets. Now, what was in the exchange of assets? We would debit the investment property. And in exchange to that, we would give our old asset. But it was too much mess, a lot of trouble. That's why I said consider study material. No need to even argue here. I have taught you from study material. In study mat, according to study mat, whenever you come across the concept of exchange. So look here, the status of this commercial substance. So this commercial substance, either it will exist in your transaction or it will not. Then I said, what is this commercial substance? Suppose you are buying a property, and in return you are giving your old assets as an exchange. First, check the cash flow of this, and what's the cash flow of this? Compare both cash flows together. If you are selling your old assets which were used in your business, then what were cash flows from those? Now you are taking property in exchange. So what will be the cash flows of property if the cash flow of the incoming asset matches the cash flow of the outgoing asset? If the cash flows from the incoming asset and the cash flows from the outgoing asset are equal, then we can say there is no commercial substance. Your cash flows are intact. 
because incoming and outgoing cash flows are same no difference was there but if the cash flow of incoming asset is different and cash flow of the outgoing asset is different and cash flows doesn't match so we will assume that commercial substance exists if your practical question is silent means if it doesn't tell you this then you will always assume that commercial substance exists and you will apply its rules what is its rule now i have explained three cases to you three cases first case second case and third case first case is fair value taken up so the asset that you have purchased do you know its fair value yes fair value given up do you know if you know the fair value of the investment property the one you have purchased but you don't know the fair value of the asset you have exchanged it is not clearly evident i told you that when you don't even know the value of the given up asset then don't wander around just refer to this wait let me show you the notes look here in the exchange of assets you have to check whether or not any commercial substance exists is it there or not meaning of commercial substance is you have to match cash flow if the cash flow is different for both then it exists and if it's same then it's not a commercial substance and it won't bother you you may use any asset the cash flow will stay same if cash flow is different then it will be considered that commercial substance exists okay in lecture number 6 i started with that if commercial substance exists then what should we do so i taught the first case in this please pay attention it's all according to study mat first case fair value of the taken up asset is known to you but you don't know the fair value of the given up asset i have explained an example look at this fair value of taken up is 20 lakhs the fair value of given up you don't know so just leave it now look what is the carrying amount so we'll assume ip that is there worth 20 lakhs and the assets you are giving worth 12 lakhs so you have gained 8 lakhs assets worth 12 lakhs exchange for 20 lakhs a gain of 8 lakhs you gave 12 and received 20 lakhs is he a fool such cases are there in study material if you know the fair value of taken up then record that value now another case look at its entry let me show you second case case number second the fair value of taken up asset is not evident you don't know the worth of asset you bought but you know the fair value of the given up for example fair value of taken up we don't know but the given up value is 20 lakhs and carrying amount is 25 lakhs so we will assume that your 25 lakhs asset is being exchanged with 20 lakhs worth asset If you are given up asset worth twenty lakhs, then you bought new asset for twenty lakhs. So we will prefer the given up entry will be IP debit twenty lakhs to asset twenty five lakhs. So we'll put five lakhs in PNL. That's your loss. Taken up fair value you know, but not given up, then refer to taken up. Given up fair value you know, but not taken up, then refer to given up. In third case, you know both. We saw one more case. you know the fair value of the asset that is coming and asset that is going both are evident look third case see this example in your copy third case if both the fair values are clearly evident you know both fair values taken up and given up so your study mat says refer to given up let's assume the fair value of your investment property 20 lakhs there are two things in given up let's take fair value 25 lakhs 
and its carrying amount is 20 lakhs or say 18 lakhs let's take little different you know this and you also know this so it is clearly written in your study mat in india s40 that refer to given up forget the taken up forget the fair value of what you bought at just record the fair value at what you gave up so you will create the entry ip debit fair value of given up 55 lakhs this is the cost two assets carrying amount is 18 and in pnl it's 7 lakhs taken up is there given up is not so refer to taken up taken up is not there given up is refer to given up if both are there refer to given up this means that in whichever question you are given the value of the assets so you should always prefer that taken up we choose under compulsion i'm not convinced with this so like i said i went to the showroom and i exchanged my old car with new one old car is given up and new car is taken up new car is 25 lakhs and the old car was 5 lakhs so tell me will i book new car for 5 lakhs also in between comes cash settlement I've written this here that I don't want to ruin any child's career. These days papers are not checked properly. According to checkers, only study mat answers are correct. And if the answer is not the same, they'll cut marks. So all my lectures are based on study mat. This is the truth today. A child who is studious and logical is seeing his marks drop and the one who's cramming up who is cramming up everything is getting good marks then industries calls us the board of studies had called me four times now the board of studies said that mr jindal the quality of our cs is not good suggest something i wasn't alone there were four five other teachers also even they were asked why the quality of chartered accountants is not good i clearly said reforms are required in your education system Why are you blaming the child who's studying? You should fix your examination system. Get the people who can check the papers smartly. People are matching the answers here. They are deducting the marks even on different narration. If entry in debit credit is different, they'll cut numbers because invigilator don't know entries are the same. Kid wrote line in building debit. But in study mat, it's written PP debit. So they deducted the numbers. I am angry because the child works so hard to give the exam. It is very sad when the child doesn't get justice. Suppose someone's getting 59. They won't even give an exemption of one number. I would say give that kid 60 marks. Don't do this to him. What difference will one mark make in his knowledge? But no point saying. Now till I will be 50 years old. I might be 45 years old now. I have only 5 years left. But after 50, I will stop teaching and I will contest at central council elections. And after being selected, I will make reforms for the children. The only way is to enter their system, to win elections and go into their committees because these people won't listen to any protests. And the teachers who understand the pain of the kids, only they can help students and make reforms in this area. They don't know what's happening. They don't understand the students' pain. Student is training and studying at the same time. So much study, so much syllabus, and you can't check papers. So you will have to remember these kids. Whenever the question involves the fair value of given up assets, you will always prefer it. Please go through all these examples. Then we saw one more case. We did this study mat question already. Even notes were made according to study mat. Okay kids. All these questions were done. Look, then we saw a case within the exchange that what to do if a commercial substance didn't exist. Now this means the cash flow of the outgoing asset is the same as cash flow of the incoming asset. You don't see any difference. Forget fair value concept. The carrying amount you have in the books for old assets, consider that as carrying amount for the new assets neither find profit loss nor you will be looking at the fair value 
the carrying amount in your books for the old asset will be carried over to your new asset because cash flow isn't different so you can only change the name and not the value look here so it says in the given situation we will recognize the newly taken up investment property at carrying amount of given up asset we will ignore fair value means we will not consider the fair value there will be no gain no profit look here kids fair value of taken up 15 fair value of given up 25 and wdv 18 we will pass entry of 18 lakhs because it is not a commercial substance so we won't read this nor this we'll keep 18 the same and we'll just change its name i even made you write a note what was the note if the question remains silent on commercial substance so we will consider it exist it will be assumed commercial substance exists in transaction purchasing in cash or self construction if you buy on credit then write excluding interest and exchange these are the four ways you can buy fifth take it on finance lease what will happen on finance lease you will pass an entry rou debit to lease liability this lease liability will be according 116 in this all the cash flows that you will pay in the future discount them all we get the present value of cash outflows you have to record it on lease liability if you are lessee in finance lease so rou to lease entry will be passed so lease liability you will have to find according to the present value now calculate present value by discounting all the future payments and that's your cost see here this is the fifth way to purchase fifth case if ip is required on a finance lease we'll pass the entry in the lease we call this as rou and this is called lease liability here names are written to make you understand it's an investment property and lesser will be as creditor cash outflows present value we even did 11th question let's move now we are at concept number 6 this is called subsequent recognition concept number 5 was initial recognition purchasing property first time so what is subsequent recognition we have already purchased it now we have spent more money on it later expenses are of two types either you will deal with the property's repairs and maintenance later on or else you will replace it repair and maintenance is basically day to day servicing and it goes to pnl like getting the walls painted suppose you have a servant and there are bills for his maintenance or bills of electricity water or daily repairs and maintenance so you can put them in pnl subsequent recognition is first second is replacement the old elevator inside the building was broken and got replaced by a new one the interior of the property and the marble of the entire floor also got changed this is a capital expenditure a replacement we will capitalize it these subsequent recognition has two parts put the routine expense in pnl if it's capital expense capitalize it either we will go for repair and maintenance or for replacement When we talk about repair and maintenance then it means day to day service don't worry let's put it in pnl return of pnl example is also there here lifts maintenance it's amc any taxes paid any wall repairs or any floor repairs done any servants or maids hired all these expenses go to pnl right but then in replacements when we came to the replacement we capitalized it if we make capital expenditure but there are two cases and that was component or integral
suppose you make any capital expenditures inside an investment property you need to see that the capital expenditure that is happening is a different component of the investment property okay or it's an integral part of the property different components means you know well these days components based depreciation is applied i told you in india as 16 suppose you bought a property it has a life of 20 years but the life of lift installed inside is 10 years the lift's depreciation is in 10 years and the rest of the building's expense in 20 years when we allocate different components to the aspects of life depreciation happens on each component's life span you have to see if the replacement that you have done is of a different component or you change the integral parts on an overall basis when we talk about the integral part it means it doesn't have a separate carrying amount it's part of the same property component will have its own life own table a depreciation amount and a carrying amount accounting is different in both when we use component based approach let's say you have done the replacement i explain the process remove the carrying amount of the old component the old component has its own carrying amount first remove it or derecognize it so i went to the balance sheet to find its carrying amount which is 10000 is there anything in scrap there is 2000 so enter it in debit and pnl debit 8000 and so the old component is gone now how much is the new one 2 lakhs capitalize it new component debit is 2 lakhs with 5 years life span so depreciation would be 40000 the new component will remove the old one and it will run on its own life span but when we talk about integral there is no such stress here we take the overall carrying amount of the investment property because it doesn't have its own carrying amount this is its integral part if we remove the old floor inside the property with a new one the floor will not have its own maintenance cost it's part of the property what we will do here is add new expenses and subtract the scraps now after doing that according to the remaining life of the property this is your revised carrying amount okay the expense does not have its own life so to find out the depreciation you can minus it from what's left of the original life in component own life own depreciation but in integral the overall assets remaining life let me tell you one more thing this is scrap we can't calculate any profit or loss for it why because we do not have the respective carrying amount then how we will calculate its profit or loss old components which are different have their own carrying amount so comparing with the scrap you get its gain or loss in integral part what came in is minus and what went out is plus and then allocate in the remaining life okay now there is no need to calculate p and l i will check for you everything that i taught you I told you about two replacement cases. Here's one. First, if replacement is for different components of IP, if replacement for an integral part of an IP. In different component explanation, unit number one, first step, the old carrying amount needs to be removed. The scrap received is debit. Two old asset, which is WDV difference, profit and loss. then new one capitalized new asset to bank and its depreciation will be calculated based on its own method according to the new life but when we talk about integrals there is no need for such tension like i told you earlier all the questions are already done see i taught you this now seventh video look unit 2 is here ip is carrying amount add the expenses you've done subtract the scrap value that's your revised carrying amount take the remaining life there's no hassle when there are no different components there's no conflict understand plus and minus do it in same column take notes first we will not evaluate any p and l on the recognition of old asset because we do not have any separate carrying amount second depreciation will be calculated based on the remaining life of original asset because different components have different lives and this has same life 
See this example here and it is explained. Please take a look at this. The entire account has been prepared. These questions are also well explained. You just have to read it. It's marked important. Everything is written here. Then we move on to concept number seven. Measurement of IP. First concept and meaning of IP. Second, it's out of scope. Third, relation between 40 and 116 PP. Fourth, various issues. Fifth, initial recognition. And sixth, subsequent recognition. There's two cases in it. The seventh, measurement. And all of you here know that in the end, AS40 investment property, the measurement is just according to the cost model. Revaluation model is not allowed. In the cost model, we can write down the proper cost of the property. We can subtract depreciation from it and subtract impairment losses from it. Impairment loss is allowed, but revaluation reserve is not allowed. So the cost model is designed and given. I had told you earlier, first the fair value of the investment property. If it goes up above the carrying amount, then a revaluation reserve cannot be created because its model isn't allowed. Second point is that you can consider fair value property in the notes to accounts and the institute in fact encourages that you have applied the fair value model to it. But understand, not in the books, in the accounts, carrying amounts will do in books. But you can show the fair in the accounts notes like today's value of the property we purchased. And when you show the fair value notes to the accounts, refer to in AS113 fair value measurement. The fair values independent valuation will be given. Second, the property fair value should be based on overall single value. It doesn't matter whether AC, geysers or lifts are present in the property or not. Just a fair value. It will not be like there are so many furniture, fans and geysers available. Shown with a big amount? No. It's only a single fair value package, like I said. Look at this. Cost model only, understand? You can write the original cost depreciation impairment loss. That impairment loss will go into PNL. You have been given entry for this. Look at the impairment loss. Then there are some additional points that I have mentioned. Let me check. The first point being if the fair value is any higher, ignore it because upward revaluation is not at all allowed to you. Because you can't apply revaluation model. It just cannot. But you know, although you cannot record the appreciated value, but you can show it in the books and notes to accounts. And the institute also encourages this. It is encouraged by ICI. Someone had a doubt that is the fair value shown in notes to accounts mandatory or not. It's completely your choice. But if you do, the institute will be happy. To show the cost model in the book or fair value in the notes to accounts is your choice. But if you do, then it would be great. And when you show the fair value, follow rule 133, which states two things. Grab the independent value and show the all-inclusive single property package. Say all-inclusive single price for everything that's included. The concept number seven of measurement says impairment loss is allowed, revaluation reserve is not allowed. Now, I am going to take you to the 8th point, which is transfers. Question is done. Now, let's do the concept. And concept number 8 is about transfers. What does transfer mean? It means a change in intention. Suppose you purchased an investment property for appreciation. You waited 2 years, but no appreciation happened. Now, you are thinking of making a factory on it and using it for your business. Initially, your intention was appreciation, but now it is to use it. So now you have to go to end AS16 from 40. Or it could be that you had a building for business until your intentions changed and you built a new factory to let out the old one. So then you'd have to come from 16 to 40. So if your intention is used, you own a property that you bought for long-term appreciation, then changed your mind and wish to sell it for short-term appreciation. Go from 40 to 2 if I keep the short-term one in the long-term. Then also it will change and AS properties can change anytime. It's called a transfer. I have explained to you about the changes in intention and its effects. 
first you can transfer whenever you want to from one end as to another end as there is no entry pass required don't make any entry because balance sheet will only have a presentation change take the investment property out from the head and put it in ppe it's related to presentation not entry next what you change in the heading it will reflect in the carrying amount in the balance sheet don't check the fair value just take it from the book as it is and copy it in your notebook and once your heading changes your final address changes let's say you move from 40 to 16 then you are standing at 16 so the measurement of 16 will start if you are standing at 40 first change the heading then see what the measurement rule of this end as says you had a property and you were applying a cost model now you have put it in ppe going into it 16 will apply which suggest both cost model or revaluation model if the presentation will change so will your engagement rules that's for sure no need to pass any entry change in carrying amount you have to follow original and as like i said there will be no journal entries for such transfers from one heading to another the presentation will only change in the balance sheet listen you can make changes only in the carrying amount and the measurement is your it will change to whatever end as that you choose and go accordingly first take carrying amount there once you get there see what the index says and follow it this entire matter has been explained to you properly with questions look the 21st question has been done then in lecture number 8 lecture number 8 what is it d recognition is standardized wording it can be called sale of ip selling an investment property so students there are three ways to do it there are five for buying and three for selling first you can sell it for cash the second it can be sold in installments it can be both bought and sold on deferred credit and third is that it can be both purchased and sold on a finance lease so like i said there are three ways of disposal first cash in the cash one you just need to enter the password in cash account debit to ip now here wdb will come which we call as carrying amount here your nsp will come which is selling price minus expenses and the difference will go to profit and loss which is profit on sale and loss on sale profit will credit to pnl accounts other income and loss will debit in other expenses this is a case of disposal in disposal we will either take all the money at once or in installments or we will sell it on finance lease first you collected all your money by selling it in cash if property has been sold on a cash basis then what difference between net selling price how will it come selling price minus expenses that we deduct and the carrying amount is profit loss it will go into pnl bank account debit nsp new investment property wdb book value carrying amount difference profit and loss this is a very simple method even 11th standard kids know this but when we differ you see this example the carrying amount is 10 lakhs selling price is 14 lakhs and brokerage is 1% so brokerage will be 14000 so it has been sold for 13 lakhs 86000 so you know 3 lakhs 86000 will be your gain in this it's very simple i didn't take any shortcuts you see the bank account debited to ip to profit profit to pnl two entries then to the deferred credit same example will work if you have sold a property to someone and they will pay you in installments then your collection should be in installments if the collection is in installments then calculate the present value because it includes the interest as per the time value of money let's say an amount is due after one year and another after two years and both includes interest the same logic will apply first discount the cash inflows 
the present value of cash inflow is our selling price so i will pass an entry here which is debitors account debit to ip this is the pv of cash inflow and this is our wdv carrying amount book value name it whatever you want whatever difference arises will go to pnl what now will pay the interest debtors account debit to interest income just put in the reverse entries for what we bought on deferred credit interest has become income pass an entry bank account debit to debtors and interest account debit to pnl same entry this is not something i need to explain now you also make a debtor account then we'll write in to ip pv of cash inflow then write to interest buy bank and buy balance cd then this balance will come here then write to interest then buy bank buy balance cd if it's half yearly collection take the half yearly due interest if it's yearly take accordingly then take the money if it's sold in cash then there's no interest and if you take the money in installments then deduct interest and then interest will be updated over the period whole concept has been taught to you i will just give you an example to check look at this this example carrying amount 20 lakhs what is the down payment it's 10 lakhs it means that money has come in zero period so its pv factor will be 1 okay first year the rate is 10% 909 this is for the second year so calculate the present value it is 0.826 this is selling price the difference of carrying amount is 6 lakhs 93500 its gain will credit to the pnl from there you will get interest you can check this what was the third case finance lease you can also sell in your finance lease see if a lesser sells his or her assets on lease through finance no wait i would like to slightly modify my statement if one lesser gives asset on a finance lease to another lessee so they are assumed buyer and seller now do you know what the entry is going to be we will debit lease receivable and we will credit the investment property and this entry will pass on the fair value what is this in 116 net investment this is the present value of the gross investment also known as the fair value this is carrying amount and difference to pnl lease receivable can also be debited as an asset because like we sold the finance lease the future payments while receiving should be discounted and written down it's called fair value net investment also called present value of gross investment why because accounting is done in irr in lease this is a simple matter you can also find it in the lease then the disclosures come in concept number 10 The first thing you have to give in disclosure is a reconciliation statement. The opening balance of investment property, purchase value, replacements, sales closing balance. You have to revise depreciation, reconciliation and disclosure. There's nothing much to explain. Mention the accounting policy. Disclosure is something you read yourself. And self refer. They are not going to be in the paper anyway. These are just for understanding. So we have reached lecture number nine now. This is a question. I don't see any concept. Another question. Question number fourteen was given to you. Also a question. Then twenty four was given. These are all questions. Question thirty two and thirty three were done. Another one. Thirty four was done. It's very important. These are all just questions. Let's move on and see. Thirty eight and thirty five done. Question number thirty-six is also done. End. What else? See, if an old student watch this video, 
then he'll ask how come there are so many questions in investment property our book doesn't have these there are so many questions in the new course so i want to tell those kids one thing don't worry in the old syllabus i've given the rtp and mtp the questions were not incorporated in your book but provided separately here they are all together which looks a lot but there is nothing new just compiled everything together and gave it to them that's it okay this is the end as 40 revision is done last we got thanks best of luck jindal sir's name and finally we have completed it now you go through it i have told you all the headings subheadings everything now you should recall what we have read thank you very much take care bye in the next video i will show you ind as19 employee benefit